Uh, I just pressed record. So Meyer, we're ready to start. Today is February 8, 2022. This is the meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. And in attendance, I am Myra Ross. And could you all just, well, Elise, are you here? Yes. Elise Link? I am here. Um, Ruth Smith? Here. And Tori Dixon? Here. Marty Smith is not here at the moment unless she is just coming in now. And Sarah and Darren is not here at the moment, but said she will be here late. But we do have a quorum so we can get started with our meeting. Um, does anyone have any announcements? I guess not. All right, are there any members of the public who wish to make a statement? Do you see any, Maureen? No, there is no members okay. of the public present. All right, then we can get to our agenda. The first item on the agenda is um, regarding the North Pleasant Street. Let me, uh, uh, if, if you may, can, may I interrupt you? You can do so. the introduction, sure. Oh, um, uh, Guilford uh, just sent me an email. He uh, just had to step away to take an important call. Um, so he'll be back in just a few minutes. So if we could just- um, We can go to a different item? Yeah, just uh, as, okay. uh, and then um, and then he'll hopefully indicate when he's back or um, okay. we'll figure that out. Okay, so, yep. So I had to turn my speech off. What's the next item? <laughs> the next item, um, is, um, well, I guess in a way it's an announcement. Um, home modification loans uh, are being offered for seniors and for persons with disabilities. Um, and I provided a link uh, and, um, for each of these uh, loan opportunities. The first one is, is called the Older Adult Home Modification Program uh, through Community Action. And um, it is a new initiative designed for eligible lower income homeowners age 62 and older living in Franklin and Hampshire counties and looking to maintain independence and lead safe and productive lives in their homes. Through this program, lower income older adults can improve general home safety through no cost modifications that reduce the risk of falling, increase accessibility and improve the home's functional abilities. Uh, if you currently receive fuel assistance and could benefit from the installation of grab bars, railings, temporary ramps, tub or shower transfer benches, raised toilet seats with handrails and stair steps, please contact Community Action. Um, to ensure the highest quality programming, Community Action is partnering with the team at LifePath who have been providing services to older adults in support of independent living in our area for, for over 45 years. So um, the web, the link that I provided on the website, on the agenda, um, will take you to this, um, take you to this announcement um, through community action. And it does uh, list um, the phone number, which is 413-774. 2310, uh, and then you would click option four, and their email is home repairs at communityaction.us, and they are based out of Greenfield, Mass. Do you know if they actually provide the labor or do they just provide the materials? Ooh, uh, that's an excellent question. Unfortunately, I don't know the answer. Um, okay. So they would be the best person to ask okay. um on that and then the other and i heard the doorbell ring so let's yeah. let's let's find out who joined us um, marty marty it's oh, marty hi. yeah oh yeah i'm driving okay. sorry that's okay. okay so for the record marty smith Me has joined us. us okay and um and then the other um uh home modification loan is is through um pioneer Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And um, this home modification loan program pro 
provides low and no interest loans to make modifications to homes of elders, adults with disabilities, and families with children with physical and or cognitive disabilities. The modifications made must be necessary to allow the beneficiary to remain in the home and must relate to their ability to function on a daily basis. Typical modifications include installation of ramps and lifts, widening of doorways, and alteration of kitchen and bathrooms. Funding is provided through a state-funded loan program of the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission in collaboration with the Community Economic Development Assistant Corporation, uh, PVPC, which is the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, uh, or so uh, PVPC is the direct administrator of this program for all of Berkshire and Franklin County and portions of Hampshire and, count and Hampton County. Um, and I, and I believe Amherst is an eligible community. And so it is, um, any homeowner who is a frail elder or has a disability, uh, or has a household member who has a disability or rents to individual individual with a disability, uh, in a building with fewer than 10 units may apply for this loan. The residence's owner must apply for the loan. Um, some landlords may be eligible for a 3% loan for a tenant with a disability. Um, so there is uh, a criteria, uh, it's income based and, um, and I won't go through the other items of the eligibility, um, but I'm just sort of scrolling through, scrolling through this. Um, and so again, the agenda lists this, um, loan program as well with a link and um, if you have any have any questions or if you would like to apply or re receive or download the application you would want to click on that website that link provided on the agenda and you would want to contact the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission about this and um, yeah so that's what all I'll say about those two loan programs um, so so do uh, unfortunately so, I can't really answer many questions because they're not my loan programs, but I'm, I'm here to make it I known. I guess my question is, is there anywhere on the Amherst town website, either under, I mean, we talked about this for a long time that you know what's on the website, not only how accessible is it, but if, is there anywhere that people would who don't know these things exist would be able to run into them on the website as in citizen assistance programs or something like that because these two links you know they don't we don't want them to be a a well-kept secret um, yeah, so yeah. I guess the question so, is how are they made public yeah, so I've been actually posting all meeting materials on the town website, so um, on the town calendar. So anyone interested in what we're discussing in our meetings um, could view all our documents on the town calendar. So that's one way. Um, I know that Haley Bolton, who's our new senior services director, is um, going to feature these loan programs in the Senior Spirit, which is a uh, newsletter that comes out every two months, I believe. And I could include this on the DAAC has a web page and I could uh, feature this um, on that web page uh, for people to um, I think check that out. would be really good because nobody's going to look at, oh, let's see what they talked about last month. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I mean, everybody has to keep up web pages because I know you have to have web pages. And I, I mean, I did this for years at work and we had terrible trouble keeping it up. But I think that if you're going to go to a web page to look for information, you're not going to scout around through an agenda. You want to go to a place where you can say, is this town, does this town, or is there any way for me to get help with? And it seems like some of it would be for people with disabilities or some people, or, you know, people who are elderly or people who are low income or all of the above, but it would be really nice if there was a place on the website where people could look for things that will support them. I mean, it might be that it should be just on 
the senior citizen, uh, the, the senior center webpage. I don't know where it should be. This is not my area of expertise, but I, um, you have to know to look at an agenda. That's not, I don't think the best way to have people find it. I, I think Does anybody. I think, I think writing it in the uh, an article in the senior spirit, the senior sentence newsletter, is a good idea, because there are a lot of people who were using the senior census services before the pandemic and probably check it every day to see what kinds of things may be opening up there. So you can log into um, the senior center and, and say that you want the newsletter every two months and they'll send it to you automatically. So I think that's a good idea to put something in that newsletter. Okay, do they send it as an email or do they just put it in the snail mail? Um, I can, it, it, it's on the town mail. hall. It, if you go to senior services. Yeah, no, I know they send it as yeah. a snail mail. Right. But yeah. can you sign up for it as an email? Oh, yes. I've been reading it through email. You know, if okay. you click on to the enough. senior okay. spirit and you say you want it every two months, they'll send it to you um, via okay. the compute, on the computer. Okay. Yeah, so the, I feel that, uh, thanks, Ruth. That's really good information. Um, and you know, Haley has um, indicated that it's, it is a really good resource. And she told me how many um, members of the public have signed up to receive it uh, automatically. And I can't recall what the number is, but it was definitely in the thousands. And cool. okay. so it seems like it's a great resource. So if, if you haven't signed up for it now, I, I definitely suggest you do so. And um, I can make a note of um, uh, finding the, uh, how you could sign up um, there must be uh, some information on our town website. Well, we can um, go to the senior center. I guess they have their own page and you can sign up through that. Mm -hmm. But okay. I just wanted to make sure that that people knew these are really cool programs and it would be really good if people knew how to find them without digging through agendas and stuff. So anyway, okay. Um, what's, thank you for those connections. What, um, what's the next item? Uh, well, let's see, uh, uh, Guilford, oh, if, you, if you're back, um, I don't know, raise your hand or unmute mute yourself. He might be still on the phone. Oh, oh, no, I think he's back. Hi, Guilford. Hey, Paul Death here is here too. And you might want to invite him into the meeting. Yeah, I tried to make him a panelist. I'll try to do that again. Um, Paul, you, oh, he's coming. He's coming over. Okay. Okay. Um, so Paul Dethier is a registered landscape architect who works uh, with uh, under Guilford Mooring, um, our superintendent, our DPW superintendent, and Guilford and Paul are here uh, to talk about um, about they read your memo that you sent to them um, earlier this year about the North Pleasant Roadway Improvement Project, and they're here to um, show you and explain the revisions they have made based on your comments. Before so, you do that, um, Guilford, I would, um, do you remember there was a meeting subsequent to the DAAC, I believe it was the, 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 the uh, what's the subcommittee of the town council that used to meet on Thursdays that took care of this. George Ryan used to run it. And now I don't know who's running it because most TSO. of the people change. Yes, um, that you went there and you made a presentation and at that meeting, I raised a question, George allowed me to speak, and I raised a question that we had not discussed here in the DAAC. Um, and so I'm wondering if um, any of what I talked about with the, the, the access sidewalk, um, where it says sidewalk for cyclists and pedestrians. And I talked about how that is not necessarily the safest way for pedestrians to have to share a sidewalk with, you know, like if you don't know where the line is between the sidewalk and the bikeway. So I, I said that there needed to be some kind of 
um, indication that you're in the bikeway or on the sidewalk. And I don't know, I, that's not in our memo because it came up as a result of your presentation to the TSO. So if you could address that too, I would appreciate it. We can. Uh, Paul, okay. do you wanna share the drawing and go over it a little bit? Sure, yeah. And would it be helpful to go through the recommendations from the DAAC first or, or not? That's a question for Guilford and Paul. That's up to you. Okay, well, let's just, I'll just go through it real quick. So the, when did the, the board reviewed the earlier revision back in August and the, uh, the committee suggested that uh, providing two angled accessible parking spaces, including one van, assess, uh, van accessible space with a shared common access aisle located at the last angled parking spaces closest to the corner of North Pleasant Street and McCollin Street. Um, if the town decides to propose angled on-street parking spaces opposed, opposed to the proposed 25 parallel parking spaces north of McCollin Street, additional angled accessible parking spaces should be provided in close proximity to key programmatic spaces located uh, along Kendrick Park, such as the new playground. Number three, all public sidewalks and walkways need to be built and maintained to meet all applicable ADA regulations and MAAB regulations for the life of the public sidewalks and walkways. Key items that should be considered for ensuring ADA slash MAAB compliancy is proper grading so tree roots do not crack through the surface in providing smooth surfaces. And number four, provide ADA tactile surfaces at each end of the proposed crosswalks at the corner of North Pleasant and McCollin Street. So Paul, yeah, if Paul uh, wants, uh, wants, if you wanna um, share your screen. For... Sure. All right, I don't know, can you guys see that all right? Yes, uh, and uh, Paul, keep in mind that we have two members that, ha um, that have a visual impairment. Um, one is visually impaired and one is um, blind. So if you could just yep. make sure to explain what you're showing. Yeah, so I, actually what I did was I brought up the um, conceptual plan uh, that we're, we currently have um, and it shows uh, basically the old North Pleasant Street uh, starting at McClellan Street and going towards the intersection of um, Triangle Street. And it's uh, adjacent to Kendrick Park on the east side and on the west are uh, a lot of rental properties and residential properties. Um, so the concept that we put together was based on the, um, the recommendations and the email that was given to us by Paul Bachman. And so that was basically the, goes back to the public ways request for North Pleasant Street. Um, and in that request, it was looking for uh, one way northbound traffic from McClellan to Triangle Street. Um, they were looking for 55 degree, well, back in angled parking on the Kendrick Park side, which is the east side of the road. Um, and we actually chose 55 degree uh, angled parking for that side. Also on the side of Kendrick Park would be a six foot wide sidewalk. Um, then on the west side of the roadway, the existing grass belt would be removed and the roadway would be pushed over to the back side of, um, well, be pushed over towards the the uh, right of way line on the on the west side and also on the west side would be an eight foot wide uh, pedestrian and bicycle path. Um, 
the plan also shows the improved intersection and crosswalk at McClellan Street and North Pleasant, um, which would include uh, somewhat of a raised intersection with new crosswalks, uh, new ramps uh, with tactile pavers or panels. Um, we also in this plan looked at um, additional path systems across Kendrick to make better pedestrian flow from East Pleasant to Old to North Pleasant Street. And um, we also were showing additional crosswalks. So in other words, beside the revised intersection at McClellan with the, with the new crosswalks, we're also showing a uh, kind of a mid block crosswalk adjacent to house number 308 on North Pleasant Street, which is roughly the center of Kendrick Park, maybe a little closer towards the north end. Um, <clears throat> we were also showing a revised sidewalk and bicycle path entrance on the at the intersection near North Pleasant and Triangle Street. Um, <clears throat> the plan uh, actually, I'm just going to go back to the, so the eight foot wide sidewalk on the west side of North Pleasant uh, is, would actually be split in the middle and the southbound bicycle lane would be on the east side of that sidewalk and the pedestrian access uh, and walkway would be on the, the west side. Um, How is it split? Just with a line? Well, we talked about various options. We could do a textured, we could do a line, we could do a, a kind of a slight raised textured surface. Um, we could actually imprint imprint the, the asphalt with a brick pattern, a narrow brick pattern with a color. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about a lot of different options. Again, this is a, a concept, mm -hmm. so we haven't I would say I would leave this to Guilford, but I don't think we've finalized anything at this point. Oh boy. We'll get, yeah, exactly. We'll get back to this. Why don't we yeah. um, talk about the parking? Because it looks like you put in more than the required ADA parking, for which we thank you, because um, there were supposed to be one and one for this number of spaces, and you did one and two. Yes, right? that's correct. Okay. Yep. So, um, does anybody want to make any comments about the parking in the picture? Um, because it seems like that was handled really well. I don't know what anybody who can see it thinks. And, and and so um, yeah, thank you, Paul, for zooming in. Um, if you could click, yeah. uh, you know, the right of the screen where it says bookmark. Could you click that um, just to make that bigger? Yeah, see the X X that out, oh, just yeah. so yep. it's a little bigger. Gotcha. So it looks like you added um, you added uh, additional ADA space. Um, for the previous version didn't have. Um, Th um, th this many. So it looks like you have um, two ADA spaces and uh, one van accessible space, and they have a, you know, a, a common aisle, access aisle between, between the van accessible and, and the two ADA spaces, correct? And yes. then that would be the same level as the sidewalk. So yes. it'll have a nice transition uh, to the sidewalk. Yes, we haven't. I haven't actually shown the um, the ramp system in that area yet, um, mm -hmm. but it, it would be easy, you know, accessible to the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Or oh, are you saying that the whole sidewalk is the same level as the street, or just or the? It it will most likely be just the uh, access aisles. Okay, so it'll be a very wide ramp yes uh eight foot okay. and also An eight foot wide ramp. The, okay and then the five foot where the uh other discharge aisle is so it would be two ramps okay but the rest of the sidewalk is raised above the road yes six inches okay. a six inch curb okay mm -hmm. did anyone Any else have about come? that yeah about the left side there i mean the west the east side of that little service road 
East, North Pleasant Street, whatever. I have a question, um, but I just, I think I zoomed in the picture. I can't see now. Um, oh, here it is. Um, where it says street and there's a striped off area. Is that accessible parking there or is that? No, uh, we were actually, some we, we, were actually hmm. we were actually asked to um, save this tree on Kendrick Park. So oh. what we were trying to do was we ended up eliminating um, a few parking spaces, trying to reroute the sidewalk away from the tree trunk. And since we lost those spaces, we just striped that out so that nobody would park there. Okay, uh, th so that's why there's a bend in the sidewalk there? Yes. yes. And it looks like that area is raised. Is That's just because the tree is gonna be there. Yes. Let's okay. If I can zoom in here. Ooh. Oops. Okay. Yeah, so this, the uh, tree is right, I don't know if you can see the cursor, but the tree is is right here. So what we, again, just we tried to move the sidewalk out away from the tree to, to protect the root zone a little bit and also provide a curbed island um, so that we would not be paving up close to the tree. Okay, and then there's, oh, it's a crosswalk because there's another stripe. I thought that was handicapped parking, but it's a crosswalk. Yes, so there was a... Down by number five. Here. If oh, you see where I'm, where I am. Uh, near number 308, the crosswalk or? Or I don't know what, what the number is, but the two parking spaces down is number five, it says. Yes. Yeah. So there was a request to put a, an additional crosswalk in. Um, so it's a mid-block crosswalk. So we ended up um, eliminating another parking space to be able to provide the crosswalk. And again, that would have the required ramp with the um, tactile, uh, tactile pavers, yes. Okay. And, uh, and just to uh, clarify, so all crosswalks that are part of this project will have tactile surfaces on, on both sides? Yes. yes. A yep. Actually, all all ramps that we construct meet the current requirements. Yeah, sort of required. It doesn't matter what, what job it is. Oh, great. Oh, great. And that's great to just so the DAAC knows just for future reference. So all, all, all new ramps for crosswalks will have a tactile surface because that's a requirement um, under um, you know state code. Okay, do, are there any more questions about the east side of the road there with the parking and the sidewalk next to it and the paths through Kendrick Park. Are there any We're questions about, I'm, I'm not on the west side yet. You're not on the split sidewalk yet, okay. No, okay. That's a bigger conversation. I'll wait, yeah. Yep. And then um, Paul, could you speak about um, the, the materials for the sidewalks and that you, you know you're you're going to ensure what materials will be used and um talk about how you know how will you prevent tree roots or and and you know ensuring that the surfaces will be smooth well again we're just we're in the conceptual stage here so a lot of the materials haven't been determined yet um, obviously, the, all the ramps are required to be concrete. Um, what we've actually done is increase the uh, thickness of our concrete ramps over the past probably 10 years or so, um, from four to six inches. Uh, we found that vehicles sometimes attempt to drive over them and we're ending up with a lot of cracking. Um, so we've increased our, as a, as a standard practice, our concrete ramp thickness to six inches. Um, if we are if if we are going to do uh, which we're most likely going to do is uh, blacktop sidewalks, um, we've also increased the thickness of our sidewalks. Um, so we we've increased the depth of the gravel base, um, the binder course, and the top course. Um, so that should help actually prov provide a, a little better 
um, kind of maintain the, a better condition over the time periods. Um, the other thing is on the west side of the road, um, there are no more st street trees left. Uh, they've all been taken out over time. Uh, so we are proposing, well, there's a possibility that we will be planting additional street trees. That's up to the tree warden. Um, and those would most likely be placed away from the sidewalk. Uh, oh, great. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. So can you give us a bitter, uh, <clears throat> for me, cause I can't see it. So a verbal description of the, uh, the west side sidewalk. There's a, there's a eight foot bike lane and then a six foot sidewalk or how could you define that? Yeah, what, so what I, you're proposing? You know. um, so what I did was I, I drew up a cross section of that which um, hopefully would help out a little bit on understanding what's happening. So on the west side, we're proposing uh, an eight foot wide sidewalk okay. uh, that would be raised above the road four inches. Okay. Then on that sidewalk itself, four feet of it on the west side would be designated for pedestrians. And then the four foot portion on the east side uh, would be designated for southbound bicyclists. And again, there were different options for delineating the two sides. It could be a stamped um, textured mm. blacktop. It could be colored or it could be a combination of both. Where are the northbound bicyclists? The northbound bicyclists would use the one way they'd share the road uh, and ah, do the okay, one way okay. north. Okay, so Ooh. they're in the street with the cars. It's not yes. a highly traveled. Um, okay, so the northbound bicyclists are in the road with the cars. The southbound bicyclists will be sharing the sidewalk with pedestrians. Yes. Mm. Well, so, they'll have so, four so feet wide, and then the regular side. How how wide is a regular like residential street sidewalk? Well, just the, so I can get us. Uh, I don't. The mm -hmm. narrowest sidewalk that we actually try to construct these days is five feet because our sidewalk plow needs five feet. Um, okay. So we don't damage it. If we drive it on a smaller sidewalk, it would actually cr probably crack the edges. Um, okay. so, so we try to do a, a minimum of five feet. And again, it could vary depending on the space that we have available in the, um, in the location in town. So my concern, and I think Elise's concern oh, is I have that the bicycles that are going southbound, which is against the whole traffic flow for that part of the road, are going to be sharing a sidewalk with pedestrians, some of whom are uh, unable to see them coming, some of whom are elderly and not so easily moved out of their way, and four feet when it's actually on the same level that's too close. Seems like it's an accident waiting to happen to me. You know, I'm sorry to cut in. I'm just, I'm Go really ahead. kind of riled up about this because my experience with bicyclists is they don't, they don't follow rules. They get on the sidewalk and they weave around people. Uh, as somebody who's, I'm legally blind with a guide dog. My guide dog, you know, I mean, she's trained to kind of help me, but I can't see a bicyclist till they practically hit me. And I've had some here near misses and having something on the same level, what's to keep mm -hmm. them from not weaving in and out of people? What's to keep them on that line? If it's I if would on agree. The level. That's that's exactly my problem with it. Yeah. If it's and on I will the be able to same level, it's gonna be a mm -hmm. territorial. Um, it's too close. Can I, yes. can I interrupt for a second? Sure. Yeah. I'll show the other option. Okay, I'd, I'd also like to say that, um, again, we were asked to look at the complete streets approach um, to the final design, which maximizes um, the use of both bike all, all users. Um, and they asked us to uh, include a consideration of a separate southbound lane for cyclists, either on the street or the sidewalk. It should be um, on the street, they're a vehicle. So, Sorry. So, yeah. So again, so again, we're we're 
exploring options. Um, one other option that we were looking at. You can make the Are sidewalk narrow. Well, let's let's, let's, let's have Paul wider. finish. Let's have yeah. Paul finish his yeah. thought. Okay, so uh, so actually now what I brought up was a cross section of North Pleasant Street uh, looking north, um, and in this cross section, what we're showing is mm -hmm. on the west side of the road would be a six foot wide sidewalk for pedestrians. Uh, then there would be a curb down to the road grade. Uh, right a, adjacent to the curb would be a five foot wide southbound bike lane. Then the rest of the roadway would then be a 15 foot northbound travel lane and then 18 feet on the east side against Kendrick for the back end parking. Um, so what this would do would then be put your southbound bicyclists at road grade uh, and not separate it from the six foot wide sidewalk on the west side. Where did you get the other two feet? If you took, you had eight, now you have six. Um, did you take some away from the road with? Uh, no, I just, I added the two, I, the two feet that we lost for the yep. sidewalk got added to the, the travel lane width. Right. of 20 feet. So what, what okay. we're up against, what we're up against. I like is, that plan. That's much safer. Okay, yeah, I do too. So I'm trying to understand. So there is a definite line Ray between sidewalk. there's a race sidewalk for pedestrians and then it's a, a different thing for bikes. And the bikes are all in the street, like you said. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. I feel better about that. Yeah, that plan is exactly what you said. Oh, it looks like oh, we have Saren here now and Saren uh, um, has raised her hand. Saren, yes. would you like to comment? Yes, um, I'm sorry, I have just joined. Are you talking about the, uh, the street right in front of the town hall? No, no, no. no. Kendrick Park. Oh, Kendrick Park. One comment I will make but I don't know if it applies to this or not. But the accessible parking, is it on the wide travel lane? Like, for example, what my concern is, after uh, you get off the van and you lower your lift, it, if there is a downturn on the road that is not level, it will not deploy. So it's angled this, parking. It, oh, it's angled parking. Yeah, yeah, it's back in angled parking, and he they they put in an extra handicapped space. But still, a where like in this picture, for example, that the sketch we're seeing, the car on the left is that parked at a accessible place. Uh, oh, I see. It is coming backwards. So the lift will not lower on the left side where the bicycle is. No. It will be lowered on the other side. Correct. Yes. Oh, yes. yeah, Paul, the, please. Yeah. The um, Actually, in this uh, cross section, the parked cars are on the right hand side, which would be Kendrick Park. So if you were to, I'm going to go back to the other picture if I can and zoom in. If, yeah, please do. Yeah. So, Saren, what you're seeing, uh, I guess you saw it in sections. So, if you were to continue thinking of this in terms of a section, you would turn your head. And, I um, see. Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Because I said, uh, because I know I, I, that's an issue I face. If the where the lift lands, if it is not flat surface, it just will not open, it just yeah. doesn't deploy. Okay, mm -hmm. just wanted to make and sure. And since Saren Sorry. is new here, so um, DPW updated the plan and it, it now includes two ADA spaces and a van accessible parking space, uh, each with a shared um, access aisle between them. Uh, Paul, I don't know if you can sort of hover your mouse to sh show uh, Saren. And yeah. um, the access, access aisle will be at the same grade to the sidewalk leading. Great leading yeah. to the park and just in okay. lead in for the sidewalk in general. Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. 
it looks like Marty's raised your hand. Um, yeah, I'd just like to say that um, I wholeheartedly um, believe that the separated bicycle pedestrian is the right way to go with the bicycle being on the road level. And my rationale for that is we're seeing more and more electric bikes and those electric bikes can go up to 30 miles an hour and putting them at the same level as the pedestrian is just really dangerous. Yes. Thank you, Marty. Wait, uh, Elise, I saw your hand raised for a second. Yes, you have a comment? Um, I do. And I just, it's a suggestion about the, um, and a question about the sidewalk bicycle thing, even though they're going to, we're at two different levels. Will there be a tactile um, edge so that um, it's sort of now it's sort of become a curb, right? between the, um, I don't know how to explain it, between the bicycle. And yeah, it's a raised side, it's a regular sidewalk. Yeah, so is there, okay. Okay, so it's an actual curb now. Yeah. So that I'm not gonna step, people aren't gonna accidentally step into the bike lane. Okay. And now why I, is I, it a six inch curb on one side and a four inch curb on the other side? Well, in actually in the, um, when we're looking at- Is that at the doing, topography? No, when we were looking at the eight foot wide sidewalk and yeah. we were gonna have the bicycles on it, we actually reduced the curb height um, so there wouldn't be that much of a drop off to the road. Um, uh, ah, actually, well now you can put it back higher. Yes. Because we, we don't want it to be attractive for them to get on the sidewalk. Yeah, I think that's, the, uh, Myra's making more sense than I am at this point. So yes. Okay, uh, yeah. Marty, uh, you raised your hand. Thank you. I already, I already. Oh, said, oh it's a, a legacy. It's a legacy. It's hand. a legacy. Yeah. Okay, I'll lower that. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, are there any other comments or questions about this project? I guess in general, um, the comments that we've made on this um, change should apply everywhere that you're going to put bike lanes adjacent to a sidewalk. Because this yes. will come up on the east side of the North Common um, and possibly the east side of the South Common based on some other comments we made when the people with the, um, the performance venue came. Um, so I think rule of thumb is for all projects that you do is that bicycles and people do not share the same space. Yes. Yeah. Thank I don't mean people, I mean pedestrians. We're all Thank people. You. Bicycles you, have people on them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Myra. Um, Thank are there you, Myra. any are there any other comments or um, so so far if if the board uh, if the DAAC wants to provide, um, you know, recommendations, it, it sounds like you would you would recommend that the um, the bike and pedestrian um, path be separated from one another at different grades, and um, that you like the proposed um, ADA parking spaces and the access aisle and, and its connection to the sidewalk and to the park, uh, to the Kendrick Park path uh, walkways. Is that correct? Sounds right. I think so, yes. yes. Yeah. And, Are you gonna draw a stripe in the middle of the roadway for the bicycles? I mean, that's not a safety issue for pedestrians, but it could be a safety issue for bike, bicyclists. Like on the bike path, you're gonna put a stripe in the middle? That'd be uh, good. Yes, there would be a marking to separate the northbound travel lane and the southbound bicycle lane. Okay. Um, cool. Great. And that's connection. No, that's All good. Right. It sounds like a good plan. Thanks. Thanks yes. for bringing it. And I'm glad that I was at that TSO meeting because it was a TSO. No, what is it called? I can't keep. Uh, yeah, TSO. I'm glad I was at that because that's where it came up and it was really clear. That, um, that this is an issue and we hadn't dealt with it because I don't think we were 
um, I don't think we were wise to the whole situation there. So mm -hmm. thanks for bringing it this way because I think um, I think your plan B is a good plan. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. And then you also and you like the do you like the crosswalk at um, McCullen and North Pleasant Street and then the mid block crosswalk. Sure. Is that correct? So you like the crosswalks. All right. Well, it sounds like you're getting some good positive feedback, uh, Paul and Guilford. So I will go ahead and type this up and uh, send this along to whomever I'm supposed to send this along to. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll certainly copy the both of you in, in my email with the, the DAAC memo. So thank you both for attending. Oh, I have a question meeting. for Paul. What yes. I called plan B, what did you call it? So we can put it, we can uh, properly. Well, it, it was actually just option B. Option B. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we, we very strongly favor, we can't enforce, but. Um, it'll be pretty dangerous if plan A is what happens. Okay. Oh, yeah. And what I'll do is I'll email these two plans to Maureen. I don't I don't believe you have these. Okay. Yeah, great. That would that'd be great. I can put file that away for record. All right. Well, thank you both uh, well, for yeah, attending. Love the, new, love the new crosswalks on Pleasant Street or North Pleasant Street. Thank you. Oh, nice. Thank you. Cool. All right. All right. Well, you're right. welcome to stay on, or if you have other items that you uh, need to attend to, you can certainly um, leave the meeting, but we're going to continue on with our agenda items. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Thanks. Thank bye -bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so next okay. on the docket. Was it the disability um, curriculum or the? Yeah. I, and you, unfortunately, I, I've been uh, so busy, uh, wonderfully busy with the age friendly project that I'm working on um, that yeah. I haven't, um, I didn't get a chance to read that attachment. So, Myra, if, if you, um, oh. I think you're the one that sent that, that um, email. Yeah, I, I, I wrote it. Saren read it and uh, approved of it. Um, and essentially, it's what we talked about last month, which is just a letter to the Joint Capital Planning Committee telling them a little bit of the history, um, not much of the history actually of the um, accessible signals and how they don't work, mm -hmm. the traffic signals and how, we, how they need to be re repaired slash replaced. Um, and that, you know, how we're, uh, the, it, we also said that it's a maintenance issue, not necessarily only a capital issue. And then we said that we favor the um, the um, hearing, oh my God, the auditory amplification right. devices installation for the Bangs Community Center. So it says those two, um, and we the joint capital planning, I think begins to meet around now. So, with the approval of the committee, if anybody has any changes to make, you should say so. With the approval of the committee, we'll send that off to the Joint Capital Planning Committee. Did people read it? Yeah. Does anybody have any comments about it? No. I think you covered it all. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Great. Okay. All right, so we, um, Maureen, should you send it to them or should I send it to them? I don't know the protocol. Uh, let me put it on letterhead. And um, if unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to read this. So uh, if you don't mind, if I can do a, a read through and um, maybe I can sort of tighten it with um, with the little, um, uh, I'll see if there's any sort of grammatical things that need to be updated. Um, and, um, but other than that, I, yeah, let me put it on letterhead and then I can send it over to you, Myra, to take a look at it. And then we can send it to the joint capital. It's Kathy Shane and I don't know who else. There's a new person on it. Yeah, I'll check so, though that their webpage. Yeah. Um, all right, yeah, I'll okay. work on that uh, this week. Um, and, okay, and I'll send it over. They're starting you. to meet now, so I think it's important for them to get it. Okay. All right. So, and the yeah. other item was the disability curriculum that Tori brought to our attention. 
at the last meeting. Um, I contacted Sarah Barber Just, who's the English department head at Amherst High School, and she sent me this really incredible curriculum. And um, I see Maureen also sent out the interview that she did um, with uh, Crip Magazine. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's, um, she and I had a lot of back and forths about it. Um, we talked about the w use of the word disabled um, because Ruth actually wrote to me that she liked better people with disabilities. So I sent that on to Sarah who said that the new literature is using disability. And we had this whole back and forth about uh, disability in, in their use and in her use, not referring to the individuals themselves, but individuals disabled by the conditions of society. So they have a disability. And we went back and forth about language. We had a lot of fun with it. And apparently that is the customary academic use of the word now, whether we like it or not. And, but anyway, she's got this great <laughs> curriculum and um, I did send your concerns along, Ruth. Just uh, thank you. you. Know. <laughs> it's, an it's an evolving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm you know, it's rain. sort of, you know, I wrote to her and she said, you have no idea how much work I did looking into this because initially I had the same response that you did. So, um, you know, she's, she's really quite a maverick kind of person in her own <laughs> very, um, you know, she started the, now they're calling it queer literature. They started originally by calling it gay and lesbian lit. And I think it had another iteration. And, you know, again, with the academic language, she was telling me she is a lesbian and she was telling me how um, she was first uncomfortable with the use of the word queer and now she's embraced it and blah, blah, blah. So we had a lot of fun back and forth for about a week. Um, <laughs> But um, I, I, so I this is the curriculum. I remember reading once there are now more than a dozen ways of people identifying, uh, you know, this what their sexual identity is. So yep. you know, it's yeah. true. Pick, pick the one that most best applies and that you like. Yeah, best. So, <laughs> well, you know, I think but she was saying the academic literature says blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't like it. Um, and I said, you know, just I said, I'm not. Um, you know, I'm not queer, but I don't, I find, you know, my past history says that that word is a pejorative word. And she right. said it used to be, but it's not anymore. Not anymore. And, well, That's we, right. Yeah, we, had a lot, we had a lot of fun. Um, now the anyway, discussion is around the pronouns. That, exactly. What pronouns should each of those folks use or prefer to oh, use? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it was a lot of fun in this curriculum. I haven't taken the time, I haven't had the time to read any of this stuff, but you have the whole list of materials um, that they're gonna read. Some of it is um, for a 12th grade elective. So not every kid has to take this class, but some of the material that's in the class um, is in the 10th grade class, the way Tori told us last semester. So that they're making sure that everybody has some of it. And then I guess, I don't know, I, I forget how they're gonna change it, but. Um, you know, everything is fluid. If you don't see something there that you think she might want to use, I'm sure she'd be happy to know about it. But she's one of the most open, inclusive people you would ever want to meet in your life. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks, Tori, for bringing this to our attention. You're welcome. It looks like an amazing um, curriculum. And I'm excited for the students. Yeah. And no, it was I, all the I, really good, uh, great work of the DAC um, in, in the last, I don't know when this conversation started. It was definitely a few years ago. So it was all the good work that led years. up to this. Yeah. Oh, it was yeah, before, before me. the pandemic. Yeah. It was yeah. before yeah. Alicia I, I also, and I were on it. Oh, yeah. Maybe three like years. The, it's I been also like yeah, the idea that quite a while. The, there's a there's a, that the tenth graders will all of them will get a general introduction, and then mm -hmm. if any of them want to explore it further, they can take it as a senior as an elective. 
I mm-hmm. think that's a good idea because I think all kids should should understand the the uh, the, the whole topic and the issue of disability. Definitely. And one thing that she said to me was that I don't know if she wrote it, but I think she she said it um, that she's finding that her students are kinder to each other when they understand what some of the people in the class live with. Exactly. You know, some some disabilities are very obvious and some disabilities are hidden. Um, some of them are emotional and some of them are attentional and some of them are, you know, all kinds of things. Some of them are medical. You don't see that somebody, you know, has an insulin pump and that they don't feel good a lot of the time and that, you know, but they do, you know, it's not necessarily something anybody knows. So um, anyway, it was a it was a very nice exchange. And I'm wondering if this committee or if someone on the committee would like to write uh, an official note to her slash the superintendent, because didn't this originally go through Tim Sheehan at some point? I wasn't on the committee when you talked about this, but I think there was some, some correspondence between Joe Trangali and Tim Sheehan, who at the time was curriculum director. Does anybody remember any of this? I don't remember the I, specifics. I know that we talked to a number of different people and some of it was the special ed department and I, I'm not, I don't know the specifics anymore. I don't remember. We had some people come from the high school to our meeting in person, but yes. I can't remember. And she, I don't even know if she's still doing that job because there's so much turnover. Um, oh, I can't remember her name now. I can't. I remember her face, but. She was in the special ed. She had a lead role. Hmm. Oh, could it have been um, Danielle no. or Emily? No, the, it was like an administrator. It wasn't a teacher. Oh, oh, maybe Mickey Gramacki. Maybe the well, no. uh, may, um, perhaps very could, tall, pretty woman. No, uh, weren't you no. there, uh, Maureen, at that time? I think I you was were. actually. So I could look through old meeting minutes yeah. and find out their names. Yeah. Um, and then in the meantime, if, if someone wants to draft a thank you note, um, you know, if, uh, and then we can send it off, um, you know, at the next meeting, we, you, you all could review it and then we could send it uh, one off m- maybe to Joe Trengali and one to the, and then um, whomever at the schools. I just had a, such a long association. I don't think I should be the one to write it. Um because it would be better if it came from somebody outside of me. Um, but um, I think it would be great if somebody would write it. And I, from a different source, uh, based on something I'm doing for the JCA, I found out who the curriculum director is now. It's not Tim Sheehan anymore, but I have her name and her email. And I know her. Okay. So we, we have, we know who to send it to. We've sent it to her, to the English department head, to Joe, um, I think, or I don't even know uh, who to send it to, but somebody should write it. Just a thank you that we looked through the curriculum that we're incredibly impressed. And I don't even know how many schools in the whole country are doing anything like this. I mean, it's one thing to, you know, have a couple books that you read here and there and acknowledge that kids use wheelchairs and that some kids you know, have medical disabilities and that some people are, you know, have emotional disabilities, but this is an incredibly comprehensive look. Um, it is. I'm wondering. Um, what is in the DESI in our state is different than what uh, Sarah Barber just put together. She did include some um, significant uh, information that is included in the DESI, but um, she elaborated so much more and it's just an incredible curriculum. I can try my hand at the thank you. Um, that would be great. Letter. That would and be it doesn't great, have to be were, long. You, you just the original, yeah. yeah. It could just yeah. be a, you know, a quick, it could be a, a paragraph or, a, a, you know, a couple of sentences. 
So it doesn't have to be a, you know, a full page or, or anything. Okay. Yeah, it's just an official um, acknowledgement by this committee of the work that the schools that particularly, you know, that, that they have done. And right. especially now when there's all this, we don't want our kids hearing about anything that'll upset them. Um, I, I know, I know. It's really important for us to, I think, support all of this kind of curriculum. I mean, I hope those people don't find out about some other curriculum because we have, there's unbelievably wonderful uh, anti-racist and American history, really American history curriculum. And um, well, they have different good. opinions of American history so, or world history, so can't argue. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so is that, oh no, there, oh yeah, that's the only other thing, right? It is, unfortunately I didn't finish we the don't draft. Have minutes. Minutes. Yeah, we don't I'm have almost minutes. done actually. Um, uh, another quick update is uh, you, you, I did inform you that we did receive the grant from the Mass Office on Disabilities uh, to fix the, um, the door. door at yeah, the bank center. Cool. So um, the contract has been signed by both the town and the state. Oh, cool. So we just need to set up the um, our account with our um, with our accounting department and then go ahead and go through the, the procurement process and, and get that going. So um, we'll be trying to get that started um, as soon as possible. So that's pretty, that's exciting. Oh yeah, you wanna update us also on the, um the mailing of the questionnaire, the, the senior. Yeah, yeah, and thank you, Myra. So was... I believe I informed everyone at the last meeting that I'm assisting the senior services department with this new initiative um, to become, to have the town become a designated age and dementia friendly community. And, uh, um, and part of this initiative uh, will be sending out a survey geared towards uh, older adults of 55 or older and also care caregivers. <laughs> and Myra was um, gracious enough to assist with the uh, reviewing the surveys. And I believe Saren attended the first meeting. Yes, exactly. And, Just, yeah. Yeah, and that was really great. You provided really great feedback, and 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 Saren was gracious enough to um, serve on the task uh, on the working group. So Saren, please expect an email coming. Um, we'll be holding a meeting, I believe, on February twenty eighth. So I'll be sending you an invite to that. February twenty eighth, you say? Yeah, it's a Monday, okay. and I think it'll be at ten thirty. And then we'll be okay. holding um, public forums and listening sessions that will be open to the public. And each month we'll have a, a specific topic. So one month might be on transportation, another month might be on housing, uh, another one might be on you know sidewalks and outdoor spaces, um, and there's some other item uh, topics as well. But yeah, so we um, uh, are uh, are going to launch a survey, and it should be ready to go. I think by the end of this week, or maybe early next week, and we'll be providing it in um, uh, electronically, uh, and it will be featured on the website. And we'll be having drop off locations of like uh, dropping off um, some survey forms um, at key locations, such as like the Clark House, um, the Jones Library, the Survival Center. There's a whole list of where we'll have surveys uh, available. And then we'll, we're going to be doing a, a, a rant um, with the assistance of John Hornick, from, who is the chair of the Amherst Housing, uh, Amherst Affordable Housing Trust. He and some UMass students will be doing a random uh, sample survey um, among all seniors. We're going to um, randomly select 500 residents and uh, mail them hard copies to fill out. And then um, we will be offering the survey in multiple languages. So in print um, and online, it will be offered in English and Spanish. And then uh, we have volunteers that can assist in other languages. 
such as Portuguese, Korean, Mandarin, and Khmer, Khmer um, which is spoken in Cambodia. And so, yeah, that, that's the update about um, that project and the surveys. I have two questions. Yep. One, I know he's mailing it out to 500 people to get the random part of it, but other people are allowed to elect to complete it in addition to the 500, or it's only for those 500? Um, he, so we, um, in the, like the footnote or the header, the header or the footer, in the footer, we um, type in, uh, this is the mailed survey version, um, just so we know which ones are, have been mailed out, but we will be offering um, on hard copy uh, to anyone else that wishes to receive one and we'll be having them dropped off at like doctor offices and different um, uh, different um, different um, organizations and services um, that are geared towards at older adults and those will, will be also in hard print. Okay, so you're hoping for a big response, not just yeah, those 500. Yeah, yeah, we, I, I'm actually kind of overwhelmed. We may have a very big response, which is, is great, but also um, we are seeking uh, assistance from volunteers and we do have a, a, a good list, a uh, running list of volunteers. So, um, you know, we hope that, that folks will, we, um, you know, encourage folks to take the survey electronically just because that's the easiest for analyzing it and all that. And then obviously the, the printed copy. And then we also will have volunteers um, to help with uh, filling out the survey over the phone or, or via Zoom. So um, if someone is frail or needs assistance um, and with actually filling it out, we will um, uh, we'll be offering that. Um, and, and, and that's all explained in our cover letter. And the cover letter is, is printed in English and in, also in Spanish. And it's also, we have statements um, about assistance. Um, we have a statement that's, um, that says something like, if you need assistance um, uh, or would like to receive the survey in your language, please contact this person. And that's stated in Portuguese, Korean, uh, Mandarin, and Khmer. So it's a whole okay. operation and I'm pretty excited yeah. <laughs> and overwhelmed, but yes. My other question is, um, is there a place that people, if you're, if you're not on the task force, because you said that you only one of us could be. Um, is there a way for people who are not on the task force to be electronically informed of meetings and get the Zoom link, or do we just have to go digging for it someplace? Yeah, so all meetings will be open to the public and we'll be um, updating the project page. And we have, uh, it's called Eng Engage Amherst. Um, that's its own page. And then, um, and then on the town calendar, all those locations will uh, list So we have the to meetings. go digging for it. Uh, we can certainly um, send it's an email. It's not so easy for some of us to look through the website. Yep. It's possible. It's not inaccessible. But whereas you can open a website and eyeball the page in five seconds, it might take Elise and me two minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. to find what we want. And I well, want to be informed. Well, I want to be informed about these meetings. I don't want to have to go digging for information. So yeah. um, I don't know how you can, how you can do that, but, you know, just say, oh, look on the website is not, I mean, yeah, technically it's possible, but it's not inviting. It's not inclusive because it's not, not easy. No. It's yeah. not easy. That's good information. Thank you, Myra. Um, yeah. 
So there's a couple options in general with all town boards and committee meetings. There's a, an option to sign up to be notified about all right. meetings or about particular boards. So if someone would like to know about every time the DAAC meets, there's a way to sign up to get right. a notification. But this um, isn't a town meeting. This isn't a town uh, I believe actually this project would qualify because I'm, I'm posting the meetings on the town calendar. Um, we will be definitely doing a um, um, sort of a uh, uh, we'll definitely get the word out about the public forums and I'll be sending tons of emails uh, about those and we'll um, so there is a, a lot of people interested in this project and um, but for right now, we kind of just want to limit it to we were hoping that the working group would be like 10 people and now it's 25 people and it's kind of getting there might be slightly too many people um, that are part of the working group. Um, so we want to get a sample of of all demographics and um, but we can't sort of have, you know, 50 people at a at a working group meeting um because we're it's really to help plan this project and sort of um help uh, provide oversight so but we will definitely get the word out about each of the public forums and those will likely start in april okay all right anybody have anything else uh i have a question about membership uh, and i told <laughs> Maureen and Myra. Why did you laugh, Myra? No, just because it's like I wrote to Paul about this like a month and a half ago, and I didn't get an answer. So there was one person interested, and he'll be excellent. He's the retired uh, executive director of Stavros, and he also is a deaf person or hard of hearing, which he had a cochlear implant, you know, about maybe two years, two, three years ago. So it would be a very good cross section of representing that group as well. But I never heard, he was very interested. And then I told Maureen she sent the link where he can get the form to fill out. I have no idea whether he filled out the form or whether Paul got that application or what's the status, Maureen? Do you know anything about it? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. I don't uh, know, Saren. I will say that the town did put a announcement, uh, a press release um, out recently. Um, like uh, I believe on January 21st uh, to indicate that the town is looking for, for members, uh, for, you know, members of the public to serve on town boards and committees. And uh, the DAAC is listed as uh, one of the, one of the 16 committees that have vacancies. So. Um, of course the Jones Library Building Committee is there too. Um, might be, but so you know, the town manager's office is is aware that there is a vacancy on this committee, um, and but as I said, there's there are a total of sixteen boards that have vacancies. So um, I guess I would, I, I will, um, you know, ask you to remain patient. Um, as as the town tries to uh, uh, fill these positions, um, it's just they can't do everything overnight. It does is a process, and they have to prioritize. It has been six months. Mm -hmm. It's not. Overnight. I know, and and this person, uh, his name is Jim, and when he contacted me, he said, oh, "I said, would you be interested? You'd be very mm -hmm. good at it." He said, "Yes, you would be." And then the, uh, the link was sent to him. The only thing I don't know, whether he filled out the form and it is sitting someplace that- Well, if he didn't fill out the form, then- Yeah. If he didn't fill out the form, that's a big problem. But if yeah. he did fill out the form, um, you know, it's it's been six months because Xander, I believe, wasn't even here at the August meeting. 
So it's been, yeah. you know, half a year. But yeah. it's we are powerless to do anything except wait, I'm afraid. Because I mm -hmm. made it, I, I wrote a letter and I um, didn't get a response to that issue. I'll follow up with Jim to see if he filled out the form and it is being held someplace. And I will let you know in writing. Okay, that's good. Anybody else? All right, I need a motion for adjournment. I'll motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, um, Saren? I accept. Elise? Yes. Marty? Adjourn. Ruth? Yes. Tori? Yes. And me? Yes. Okay. I guess All we're right. adjourned. Our next meeting is March 8. Oh, okay. Same time, same place. All right. All right. Very good. All right. Thanks, Very everyone. Good. Have a great day. Oh,